This is Steve. And this is Sean. This is Acromedia's High Five. So, Steve, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to be talking about the checkout in Commerce2.x. It has a checkout? It does have a checkout. Like most commerce systems, it has a checkout. Oh. Well, that's pretty much all we need to talk about, right? Is it? Well, I said most systems. All systems, I would hope Contains for. checkout. Yes. Marked <laughs> off the list. <laughs> Marked off the list. What we're going to be talking about today is what you can do with it. Because mm -hmm. you can do a few things with it. Like checkout. Yes. <laughs> you can also can configure it. You can or configure. customize it. Or integrate it. You can also have more than one type of checkout. What do you mean? You lots of types of checkout. Um, so you can actually configure the checkout, what they call the checkout workflow in Drupal Commerce, which lets you say, um, here's the flow I'm going to go through because mm -hmm. the checkout isn't, despite what we were making fun of, actually just a checkout. Do you take billing information? Do you take shipping information? Do you need to know, you know about certificates or do you mm. need to take registration information? There's lots of uh, different data and that can change quite a bit depending on what your product is. If it's a digital product, yeah, you need shipping information. I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, if it's a, like a course registration, you might need pre-existing certificates, or you might, um, you know, say if you sell something to people of a certain professional group, they might need to prove that, you know, they're a certified doctor or an electrician or whatever mm -hmm. to, to buy products. So you can actually have lots of different um, checkout options. Both you can have one that you specifically have to configure for your site, but you might even sell different types of products if you do courses and materials and other things like that that have significantly different And flows. all of that is configurable, or do you actually have to like be a dev to do that? That's actually quite configurable. It's pretty much all drag and drop stuff. So mm. you can actually have your, you can create a new checkout flow, have a list, and you can just slide around and add or remove the pieces you need. If you need to build a whole new section, like a, a custom thing to pull in, you know, a, a safety certificate, mm. you might have to build that. If it's just a text field or something, that's fine. But if it needs to, you know, validate against a third party or something, you probably have to, a dev has to build that. But as far as moving the setup and doing any customization for stuff that already exists, purely drag and drop by the admin. And uh, from what I know too is that uh, in terms of integrating into you know different like subscription uh, type you know integration, I'm thinking Zora off the top of my head. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a subscription-based company, that all kind of happens pretty seamlessly as well. Yeah, so that's what I mean. You're going to uh, integrate that into any. You're going to hook into any part of the checkout. Mm -hmm. So you say, hey, you know, maybe you do something when you add to cart. Maybe you do something when you complete the order. Maybe you do something at certain stages of mm -hmm. the cart. Maybe you even go offsite and come back. You know, paying through PayPal, registering through Eventbrite, or something like that, mm -hmm. or you have this other system where you go off and come back. So you might have any of those steps. So the steps aren't necessarily just, you know, whether the billing pane shows or not. They're even, you know, if you go offsite or whole new pages and stuff. We should talk a little bit about just the standard checkout flow too for Commerce too. You know, I know that you know in in Commerce one checkout was something you kind of had to create um, when you're doing an install, but this time around we actually have a best practice checkout, do we not? Yeah, I mean, we had some stuff in Commerce one. It's just it's just been a you know improved to be like a more modern checkout. Mm -hmm. um, you know, billing information on this side. You know, floating cart along the other side showing your your totals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Not you know a series of pages you have to to go between and your cart was three steps ago and you can't remember it and you know we track uh, what step you're on you know step two of four and how long you're going we just do a lot of those sort of modern uh, cart best practices uh, out of the box now um that they weren't a thing in commerce one but they also weren't as common you know thing five six years ago they weren't necessarily the de facto and who did the ux on that um, uh, we did a bunch of it um, at Acro, and also a bunch of it was done by Commerce guys when they did the initial um, setup. A lot of the stuff that comes from uh, just general functionality of mm -hmm. these were things that we just uh, like showing the cart sort of uh, beside was just not really a thing we were set up to do in Commerce One, even from an architecture standpoint, uh, UX regardless. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we should be talking about with this? I feel like we've covered the main things. I mean, that's the main things. We can get into sort of, you know, nitty gritty details, but. It's all the customizations. That's what's new and cool um, for the cart or for the checkout in Commerce 2. Right on. Well, if you want to subscribe to our channel to see any more, or if you have any questions, or uh, if you want to comment, do so below. Um, also, you can follow us on Facebook. You can check out our blog at acromedia.com, and you can follow me on Twitter.